Hi, this is Urge Pro of the Dr. Max channel. Prusa has a reputation for making excellent products. Those products consist of hardware, firmware, that is the software that's embedded in the printer, and a slicer, which was always called Slick 3R Prusa Edition. Most recently, with version 2, they've named that Prusa Slicer 2.0. Let's look at together at the possibility of using Prusa Slicer 2.0 with a Creality Ender 3 Pro and whether that will improve the quality of the Ender 3 Pro. Stay tuned and let's learn something together. You may be asking, why do I want to bother trying to load the profiles, the configuration for another printer into Prusa Slicer. And the reason is there are three new features in the version 2.0 software that are spectacular, that really make your life easier. Let's take a look at those three features using a calibration cat. This is a calibration cat at about 300%. This is normal size together. The first feature I wanna look at is the ability to add supports. Well, all modern slicers have the ability to add supports. So let's look at that very quickly. If we select a calibration cat, let's zoom in so it's a little easier to see here. And I can rotate this around a bit, move it over there. And now I'm going to select supports here. Select Slice, wait till this renders, and we'll see it's added supports on the face, but not under the tail. Well, I'd like to have supports under the tail, but not on the face. So let's go to the front here, and let's right click on our model, and we're going to go to Add Support Enforcers. It's going to create a little box here, and I'm going to align that box here with the tail. So it's covering the tail. So it's saying to my model, anywhere in that back section, I want to add supports. So now if I do a slice, we'll see it's now added supports to the back. But I still have those supports on the front. So now I can right click here on the model again. I can add a support blocker here. And we'll put that over the front. Let's go to the side and let's line it up right like that. So now you'll see I have a support blocker in the front in red, a support for enforcer in the back in blue or purple. I'll slice the model and now I have supports in the back area but not in the front. The ability to selectively control where supports are generated is extremely easy and powerful in Prusa Slicer version two. The second feature I wanna show you is what if I wanted to make just the ears of this cat a different color? Well, this is printed in layers, so if I could change the color at a particular layer, if that was easy to do, I can make the ears a different color by just changing the filament. So we're going to go ahead and slice this model then I'm going to go here and pull down until I see where the ears just start. And I'm going to click on this plus plus sign over here. Now I'm going to slice the model again. Now if I look at this, we'll see that the ears are a different color. Now what that will do in the G-code is it will add an M600 to the G-code. Most modern 3D printers that are Marlin-based support an M600. I've tried this on my Ender 3 Pro and the M600 works. In all candor, the print failed because I'd gone off to eat breakfast. The M600 was sitting there, the printer was beeping. I came back, the bottom half of the model had basically completely cooled off. I attempted to print on top of it and it didn't adhere. So you have to stay around when you get close to that layer change so you can change the filament relatively quickly. And you should use similar filament, ideally filament from the same brand, to enhance the adhesion between the layers. 
but it's as simple as that. There's a third feature I'd like to show you. This third feature is very applicable if you have a printer with a smaller print bed. So let's take this model here and let's scale it up a little bit. And let's say this model was too large to fit on our print bed. How can I print it? Well, I can slice it into pieces. How can I do that? Prusa version 2, Prusa slicer version 2 does that for us. I'm going to click on the model, click on the cut option, select the option to rotate the lower part inward. Let's move the cut line to right below the head there. Say perform cut. Now I have two parts. I can align on my print surface. This one's a little bit too far out. There we go. And it's that easy to cut the model into multiple pieces, print it, and then glue them together. Okay, now that we understand some of the reasons you'd want to do this, how hard is this to do? Let's take a look together. Next to where it says printer, if you click on the down arrow and then select add a new printer, you'll go into a dialog. I'm going to select custom printer, tick this tick box, and call this the Ender 3 Pro, and then click next. What type of printer? This is a Marlin printer. How big is it? 220 by 220. Next, 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 1.75 diameter millimeter diameter filament, 200, and we'll set the print bed at 60 by, for the default. Next, finished. We now have a new printer. Now, if I go ahead and print immediately using that printer, I'll get a result that looks like this. And I'll show you a big picture of this. Um, and you can see all, all of this stringing on this model. That's caused by the fact that the default setup in Prusa Slicer version 2 is for a direct extruder machine. So there's not enough retraction occurring. So we're going to go to Printer Settings, Extruder, and change the retraction to 6.5 millimeters, add a retraction speed of 25. We're also going to add a one millimeter Z lift. And that should be much better. Now, if you look at a print that I obtained with those settings, it was much better, but still not perfect. So Mr. Braunbearer has gone to all of the effort and published his profile in Thingiverse for using an Ender or a CR10 printer with Prusa Slicer. So if we go to this Thingiverse profile here and we download, I downloaded version four, now, if we load that in, all of the various parameters associated with our Ender 3 printer or our CR10, it's a family of printers, will be set properly for us. So let's go back to Prusa Slicer. Um, let's go back to Platter. Let's do a file, import, configuration. And we're going to select this configuration, which I have on the desktop. So let's see here, we'll select it. And now this print setting profile for this custom printer is going to be set up much better. We are going to have to make one change. And because it thinks this is a CR10, the maximum print height is too high. We're going to set that to 220 and we're going to change the bed to 220 by 220, not 300 by 300. And now if I produce a print, um, I'll end up with a calibration cat that is in fact perhaps a little better even than the calibration cat that I printed off of Kira. 
so I can at least match the quality and gain access to all of the valuable features of Prusa Slicer version 2. Well, folks, I hope this was helpful. You learned something today, both about Prusa Slicer, about adding printers to Prusa Slicer. This will apply to any printer, not just a Creality printer. Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if this was helpful to you. Subscribe to the channel. Recommend it to your friends. Have a great day, and let's continue learning things together.